Hey guys, welcome back to the basic C++ tutorial. So this is part 16 and for today we are going to talk about array of objects. So sad to tell guys, this is the last episode of our basic C++ tutorial. But don't worry guys, gagawa pa rin kami ng video about C++ but only when requested or kailangan natin guys. So kaya namin to niligay sa isang series kasi pagka napag-aralan nyo lahat ng nasa series na to, you know na yung kailangan sa ating school. So, when you know this series, kung alam nyo na lahat nung naituro namin dito sa series na to, then you can use it in your school seamlessly. So, yun lang naman kasi guys yung tinuturo sa school. So, if ever na meron tinuro sa school na wala dito, then you can kindly comment down below and we will try to make a video about that guys. So, yun lang guys. So, we are still at object-oriented programming. So, sabi ko nga, array of objects na tayo. So, ano yung array of objects? So, alam nyo naman yung array kung pinag-aralan nyo din dito sa tutorial na to. Or if alam nyo na talaga yung array, di ba, set of value siya na with the same data type. So, we have the array of objects. So, last time pinag-aralan natin, mga classes, mga inheritance. So, ayun guys, yung parang yung class, gagawin nating array. So, eto, basahin nyo yung aking short description about array of objects. So, array of objects. This is an array composed of a same class that lets you create a group of objects in an array just like an array normally do with other data types. So kung hindi niyo na intindihan tatagalugin ko guys. So yung array daw na array of objects is di ba gumawa tayo ng class. So gagawa tayo ng array gamit yung data type na ginawa natin. So yung class natin kung ano class student. So gagawa tayo ng array of students para hindi na natin kailangan gumawa ng iba't ibang variables like student1, student2, mamaya papakita ko sa inyo kung ano yung normally na ginagawa natin and bakit mas recommended to. So yun guys, para mas maintindihan nyo, let's proceed sa pagko-code sa ating code block. So get ready guys. So meron na ulit akong nakatype na code dito. So what I just did here is gumawa ako ng class student. So as usual, madalas student yung ginagamit ko. So we have a class student with the attributes of name. Kailangan niya ng student ID and a general average. But as you can see guys, I have no constructor. Kasi pagka gumawa tayo ng array, wala siyang default value. So hindi natin kailangan ng constructor. So, but I made an object function that will act like a constructor. So iseset lang natin yung information niya sa loob. But we need to call that object function in order for it to function. So, ano, yun, ano nga ba guys yung normally na ginagawa natin pagka gumagawa tayo ng isang object? So, we go down here in the main method or main function, I'm sorry. Then, we will type our class. So, student. So, gagawa tayo ng isang student. Student 1. Then, may constructor tayo, di ba guys? Then, gagawa pa tayo ng student 2. Student. Student 2. So, hindi na naman siya efficient guys. So, we have the solution na gumawa tayo ng object arrays. So, what we are going to do, guys, is to just put student, our custom data type, then variable name, students. So, ayan, group ng student. Then, paano pag-declare ng array? Always na meron siyang square bracket. So, if you have, yung hindi nyo pa alam yung arrays, then better watch nyo muna yung video about arrays before proceeding here. Okay, so ayan, gumawa na tayo ng array of students. So, i-indicate natin kung gano'ng karami yung students natin. So, for example, we have 3 students. So, ayan, meron na tayong 3 students. And I mentioned, guys, na pagka mag access tayo ng isang, isang instance dun sa loob ng array, we need to type yung variable name, which is students, then square brackets, and then yung sa loob nun is yung index niya, which is nagsisimula sa 0 and nagtatapos sa so kung ano man yung sinulat mo. So in this case, 0 yung unang-unang element and then yung last element is 2. So pagka magde-declare kayo kung ilan, magsisimula sa 1. But when mag access na kayo, sa 0 magsisimula. Okay, so hindi ko na uulitin pa yun. Panoorin nyo na lang yung array if you don't get it. Okay, so meron tayong array of student na may haba na 3. So meron tayong tatlong student. So we, we will access the first element, student 0. So guys, pwede natin tawagin ngayon yung mga object function. So as you can see guys, meron tayong object function na set information, na isa set lang niya yung information ni student, and then it display niya, which is itong isang object function, which is display information, it display lang niya lahat ng 
ating values. Then, lalagyan natin ito ng dot, set, information. And then, student ID. So, integer yan, kahit ano. So, I will put 1. And then, I will put a name. So, um, Timmy. Then, average, 98.5. So, float yan. Save natin to And as you can see, guys, array yan. Pagka niran natin yan, same result pa rin. So, as you can see, guys, nag-print na yung kanyang values. So, student ID is number 1, which is ito yung nilagay natin dito sa student ID niya. And then, we entered the name, student name Timmy. Then, we have a general average of 98.5. So, guys, mas pina-efficient niya, guys, yung pagde-declare natin ng variables. And mamaya, patuturo ko sa inyo kung paano sa for loop yan. So, pagka isa-set natin yan, students one that set information. So, hindi na naman siya efficient. Ulit-ulit yung code natin. That's why we will use a for loop para i-set lahat ng value na yan. So, gagawa tayo ng program, guys. So, ayan na, naituro ko na sa inyo kung paano gumawa ng array ng isang class. So, pwede kayong gumawa na sarili nyo class and then gumawa ng array gamit yung square brackets lang. Basta lalagyan nyo na square brackets sa dulo guys yung variable name nyo kung gumawa kayo ng bagong class. That's an object array. So, ayun, gagawa, gagamitin na natin yung for loop para iset lahat yan. So, guys, kung hindi nyo pa alam yung for loop, then kindly watch that video first. So, ina-apply na natin lahat ng natutunan natin dito. So, ang ilalagay natin for, then declaration of variable int i is equals to zero. Then, if i is less than 3, which is kung gano'ng karami yung student natin. So, if i is less than 3, tatagdagan natin yung i, which is i++, which I mentioned an increment value. So, curly braces, enter, enter. Sa gitna nyan, yung gagawin natin. So, what I want is manghihingi tayo kay user. So, i-apply na natin lahat ng alam natin, guys, about C++. So, dahil last episode naman na to, i-apply na natin. So, we will declare a variable for each of our attributes. So, kailangan natin ng name, kailangan natin ng student ID, then kailangan natin ng general average. Okay. So, guys, naalala nyo pa yung cin and cout? Of course, yung cout lagi natin ginaga ginagamit. So, cout, enter name. Then, so, we don't need ntl. Then, cin, then, greater than sign, then yung name. Kasi yun yung i-inputan natin. Then, magsi-cout ulit tayo. Ihingi natin is yung general average. So, yung student ID, gagamitin na lang natin yung I. So, if you truly understand yung lahat ng fundamentals, yung I won't need to explain kung ano yung mga for loop na yan. So, yung mga nakasulat na to, cout, cin. If you truly understand the fundamentals. So, kung hindi nyo pa naiintindihan, you better watch or magtanong kayo in the comment down below. Okay? Then, hihingin naman natin ngayon is yung general average niya. So, we will use the index or the i variable para sa ating student ID. Now, we will access our student array. So, students, then square bracket, and then ang i-access natin is yung index na i. So, sa una yan, 0, tapos magiging 1, tapos magiging 2. Then, eh, na, matatapos ng loop natin. Then, that set information. So, every time na iikot sa for loop, manghihini sa atin ng information si C++. So, ang unang kailangan is, as you can see, a student ID. So, ang gagamitin natin na student ID is yung I para unique siya every time. And then, yung name is gagamitin natin yung in-enter na name which is etong CIN name. Ayan. And then, yung general average, yung hiningi din natin ng general average. And I'm so sorry guys kasi nag-declare pa ako ng student ID. We don't need this anymore. So, siguro lito-lito kayo kung bet nag-declare ako doon na sinabi ko ay yung gagamitin natin student ID. I'm so sorry about that guys. Just delete the student ID variable. So, ayan na guys. So, if we try to run this, may kita nyo guys, as you can see here, so, i-gilid ko muna, enter name. So, gagawa tayo ng isang student. I will say team. And then, yung general average niya, 95.5. And as you can see, guys, nag-set siya student ID number 0 kasi sa 0 nga nagsisimula yung for loop natin. Kasi equals to 0 yung nilagay ko dito. And dumabas yung information na in-enter natin, which is si Timmy, may 95.5 na average. And then, for the second time, guys, hiningan ulit tayo ni C++ ng value. So, mag-enter ulit tayo ng name, Jimmy. And then, yung general average na lalagyan natin, 98.5. And as you can see, guys, student ID number 1 na siya. So, eto na yung 
number one yung student ID niya. So, makikita nyo, unique. So, yung student name niya, then is Play Jimmy, and then yung general average niya yung in-enter din natin, 98.5. Then, yung pan-third na student natin, so, I will say Tim, 90 digits lang lang yung grade niya. So, as you can see, student ID is number two. So, Ayun na. So, tatlo na yung na-enter nating student and then natapos na yung group natin kasi na-fill out na natin lahat ng variables na kailangan natin. So, ibig sabihin yung arrays na yun, may laman na na value. So, what we are going to do is para ma-improve ko sa inyo na may laman na lahat ng array na yun, we will display everything pagkatapos natin mag-input. So, pagka-set natin na information, gagawa pa ulit tayo ng for loop dito. So, same lang nung nasa taas, for in i is equal to zero, i is less than 3 then i plus plus then ang gagawin lang natin ngayon is we will access the students then yung i na index then that display information so i-display lang natin yung information nya hindi na natin set so ito lang yung tatawagin nya i-see out lang nya lahat ng value na nandun sa loob ng students natin so lagyan lang natin ang see out and l dito para mag end line sya kada display and um, we will include something here guys. So, ito pro tip. <laughs> so, hindi to recommended if you're going and kung yung professor nyo is maarte sa sinasabi nilang overhead ng computer natin kasi sa performance ng ating program. So, pero gagamitin ko lang yung windows.h na to. So, nag-include tayo ng windows.h para malinis yung output natin. So, we will put here pagkatapos nating mag uh, input, we will system parenthesis, then we will put CLS here. So, ang gagawin yan guys is i-clear lang niya yung buong console natin. So, wala ulit nakasulat. So, ibuburahin niya lahat ng nakasulat. Pagkatapos nun, i-print out na niya lahat ng nasa ilalim. So, yun lang yung ginagawa ng system CLS. Didelete lang niya lahat ng nandun sa console application natin. And then, papalitan ng bago, which is yung kasunod yung code. Okay? So, kung nalilito kayo, guys, just comment down below. I'm so sorry kung nalilito kayo. <laughs> so, i-build and run na natin yan. So, again, guys, hihingan tayo ng name. Jimmy, 92. Jimmy, 98.2. Then, our third student will be Jim will be 85. Enter. And as you can see, guys, nawala lahat nung kaninang in-input natin and then napalitan siya. So, nag-clear yung console natin and then dinisplay lahat ng ating data. So, as you can see, guys, dinisplay natin lahat ng data dun sa object natin. So, ayan. Student name, Timmy, 92. So, then yung second ko nila, guys, si Jimmy, 98.2. So, Jim, 85 yung average niya. So, yun, guys, using arrays, arrays of object, mas madali nyo makokontrol yung data nyo. So, you can even make a small game gamit yung array na to. So, ayun, it, maraming possibilities using these objects of array. So, kung mara, gagawa kayo ng enemy, may iba-iba silang HP, may iba-iba silang MP, nasa isang array sila. So, Ayun, maraming possibilities guys. So, sa inyo na yung logic, tinuro ko lang sa inyo yung syntax and kung paano gamitin yun. And it's up to you na guys kung paano nyo i-apply sa inyong program. So, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from me today. So, and as always guys, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.